This video is going to cover HL7, which is in EDI format, primarily used for transmitting lab information back and forth between trading partners. In the healthcare environment, uh, most of the transactions use HIPAA transactions, which are X12 formats, and that includes transmissions like claims or remittances or eligibility request and response or enrollment or healthcare status or prior authorizations, for example. Uh, in the pharmaceutical mar market, they might, for example, use NCPDP. But when you're talking about lab work uh, and lab information messaging, uh, primarily they'll use HL7. Now there's a couple different types of HL7. The traditional formats have uh, these tags and then the newer format, which they call FIRE, uh, has a completely different format to it. Uh, I'm going to stick with the traditional HL7 because I don't think that uh, FIRE uh, HL7 has the saturation yet, uh, but both could be useful. Uh, right now, um, a lot of the entities that are using HL7 are state governments, state or, or federal government areas or, or entities that want to do pandemic predictive trending. So they might uh, look to onboard providers, for example, uh, so that they can send information uh, about lab work and then use this information to perform trending. And um, as such, I'm also going to go over uh, an extraction tool that can be used to facilitate trending with HL7 files. So let's jump in and go over what HL7 looks like. We'll go over some examples and cover some of these record labels or tags that are used in HL7. When you get an HL7 file, it's a pipe delimited file. The first record uh, is probably going to be your MSH uh, message head header. Now, beyond that point, it's going to depend what the HL7 is used for. If, for example, you're going to set an, an appointment, you might have some I AIS or AIL um, records in there. Um, but uh, you, it's very likely that you'll have a PID segment, which holds patient information. Uh, or PV1, which holds patient, patient visit information. Uh, and then there's also ORC, OBR, and OBX for um, observation, request, or report, or results. Uh, OCR is for common order. And I put a little uh, sheet there so you can take a look at it. Uh, so let's look at a tool, for example, that will actually cover uh, HL7. Uh, the Texas EDI has a tool that will actually take uh, an HL7 file. And I'll open one here just for example. I'm going to load it. I'm going to edit it. And you can see that uh, it gets kind of hairy, you know. And if you were to normally look at this, you might be a little bit discouraged about, you know, how to use this information. You can see that... It is pipe delimited, but extracting it might be an issue. But this tool actually does a pretty cool, uh, it, it performs a, a very interesting method for actually um, extracting this information. It has a map document, which basically looks like this. And you simply go into your map document and you type in whatever you want. You, you Like the PID segment, if you want... In this example, 117, if you wanted uh, fields 14 and 17, you just w type them in there, preceded by a comma. It's just that simple. Or if you want more than one segment, you just type the segment and the uh, following fields that you want to extract, you know, just like that. It's really just that simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And... Um, when you process this request using the HL7 and the map document, it will actually produce a report. Now this report is comma delimited and it's that way for a reason because you can take this information right here and import it into an Excel spreadsheet and this way you could do pandemic trending and it's really just that simple. Uh, you can analyze thousands and thousands of records, for example, 
and extract that information. So instead of dealing with all the confusion, uh, you, you can work with only the fields that you're going to extract. If I were to look at, for example, a spreadsheet that has uh, information that was extracted uh, using this tool, you can see that the information is extracted and you can see the records and the contents of the fields that I extracted. Uh, so for example, you see PID is one of the records and PV1 uh, are some of the records that I extracted. So um, this actually makes it very, very simple to extract that information and then you can uh, import it into an Excel spreadsheet where you could do uh, your trending uh, or you can populate dashboards. Um, there's all kinds of uses that you can use. Another interesting feature uh, about this HL7 uh, application is that um, you can also save your scenarios that includes uh, your HL7 file and its mapping document to the database and you can build your own library and then uh, the next time that you return you just select it and then uh, from that point you can just uh, copy it from the database and then review it again. So it, it makes it really easy to work on the larger volumes of data. This will give you a quick overview of, of this tool for HL7 analytics. Um, if you have more questions, uh, you can leave me a comment below or you can send me an email to edi.dallas.zoho.com. So that's a quick overview with uh, to show you what HL7 is used for, uh, how to cut it up, and a, a really interesting tool that will help you facilitate um, all of your HL7 extractions, including mapping documents uh, and uh, preparation for uh, pandemic uh, predictive trending uh, or dashboard reports or uh, whatever uh, reasons that you might want to extract HL7 for. So thanks for watching my video. And um, let me know if you have any questions.